Hi everyone, Jeff Marion here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, we've all heard the term whiplash when it comes to car crashes. What is it? Is it a serious injury? I'll tell you a little more about what whiplash means and what it might actually mean in this video. This is a series of videos designed to help you understand personal injury law. I put out videos that deal with people who are injured in motor vehicle crashes, like this one, or people that are injured in falls, like this one. So click on the subscribe button, click on the bell to make sure that you get notifications when new videos come out, and check back here at this channel regularly. I've been fighting for people that have been injured in crashes, in falls, and by unsafe products for over 25 years. I created this channel to help keep you informed and to help keep you safe. The first thing we should talk about is what is whiplash and should we talk about things as whiplash at all? Very simply, whiplash is the jerking of your head, whether that's forward to back or side to side, in an impact such as a car crash. Now, in my mind, it's a negative connotation and one you should probably avoid using because I think it's one that can get turned around by a defense in a car crash case to argue that this is nonsense or it's just whiplash and you're faking it. But what we're talking about in terms of the symptoms that you may have, you may have headaches, you may have severe loss of range of motion of your neck, severe pain in your neck that radiates down into your shoulders, into your arms, into your fingers. You may have muscle tightness, spasm, not able to move your head a certain direction, or only limited range of motion of your head and neck. So these are all things that you want to look into, and we're going to talk about that in terms of soft tissue injury. There's herniated discs, and that's a whole other road we can go down another time. But what I really want to do is get you avoiding the term whiplash. You want to define your injury. Is it a neck strain? Is it bulging disc? Is it strained or sprained ligaments? Or is it a tendon problem in your neck? Um, or it could be something else entirely. And so let's put a pin in maybe there's another reason that you're having headaches or pain that's going upward. But just remember that. File that away for a few minutes. So what do you think of the term whiplash? Do you think positively about it? Do you think negatively about it? Do you think it's a term that's being overused? Do you think it's a term that lawyers made up to try to make a quick buck? Leave your answers in the comments section below. I always check back and I'm happy to answer your questions there and I'm interested in what you have to say about this issue. So we've described whiplash or soft tissue neck injuries and how do you recover if you're in a crash that's not your fault, you've lost time from work, you've had to go to therapy, you've not been able to do your activities. Well, how does all that work? How do I get this past this term of art, this negative connotation, and how do I turn it into a recovery? Well, I can base this on New York State law because that's where I'm licensed to practice and have been practicing for the last 25 years. When you're talking about something like a neck strain or spasm or uh, that sudden violent jerking of your neck that's put things out of sorts, you're gonna be really in trouble with the serious injury threshold. And what I mean by that is in order to recover in a personal injury case, you need to have what's called a threshold injury. Now there's ones that are obvious and we can spend a whole other video on what the different categories are, but the one when we're talking about whiplash, the one we really need to focus on, is the catch-all that says that you are unable to do most of your daily activities for any 90 out of the first 180 days after the crash. So what do we mean by that? Now obviously if you can't work during that time and you take three months off of work, that's likely a qualifier. That's going to be a significant limitation. But other things, Limitations in your activities of daily living, your ability to bathe, to dress, to comb your hair, to put on clothes, to tie your shoes, um, to cook, to clean your house. Those are all things, if you do them regularly, if you're not able to do them, they're all things that go into that bucket of limitation of daily activities. 
It's also your leisure activities. Do you like to, do you go for, do you walk the dog or do you go for a walk every night? Do you jog? Do you ride your bike? Do you participate in sports? Are you in bar league, hockey or soccer or softball that you're not able to participate in because of your injury? Those are all things that are going to be important and are going to go into that category. And you've got to be able to demonstrate that you have an injury. It was caused by this crash, but that's not enough to get you over the line. You got to get over this 91, 80 day threshold. One of the big ones that we don't talk about enough and is definitely something that you should talk to your lawyer about and the lawyer should keep an eye on this is your, how it affects your sleep. Think about it. If you're getting seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, that's roughly a third of your day. So if you're not able to sleep or you're getting limited sleep or maybe two to three hours at a stretch or maybe four to five hours for the entire night, your sleep is interrupted. That obviously is going to have a domino effect on your activities, on your ability to do your job, on your ability to function around the house because you're tired. So if you have severe limitations of sleep, make sure you tell your doctor about it so it's in the notes and they can help you with that. But also make sure you tell your attorney, I'm having difficulty sleeping. I toss, I turn. I can get maybe only a couple of three, four hours a night because that in and of itself is going to be an interference in your daily activities and one that the court can look to and one that potentially a jury, if it goes that far, can look to as an interference that can help you get over the line. So don't sleep on sleep. Sorry about that, folks. I'll show myself out. But one thing you should be aware of and you really should consider a red flag is, well, I'm having headaches. I'm having blurred vision since I've had this whiplash. Now, to me, my first thought is, well, you need to see a neurologist ASAP. We might not be dealing with a whiplash at all. You might actually have a concussion. If you think about the impact, or as we talked about, the whipping of your head, the side to side, what may also have happened is that your brain may have struck a part of your skull, which is how concussions occur. If you have a concussion, you may have had problems with being sick to your stomach. As I talked about blurred vision, headaches that won't go away, or headaches that happen when you watch TV or try to read or try to complete tasks at work. Um, you may, with activity, you may try to ride your bike or go for a walk or go for a run, and then you come back and you're dizzy and you're sick to your stomach and you have blurred vision or you have a blinding headache. So you may very well have symptoms of a concussion and post-concussion syndrome. What that's also known and what I would term it as is a mild traumatic brain injury or I may just even call it a traumatic brain injury. And that's where you need to see a doctor and see a neurologist. Think of a concussion or think of your brain as an egg in a jar of water. And when it's jostled, that egg could potentially strike the side of that jar and move around. And the moving around can cause small damage to your brain. And it happening again, are you falling and hitting your head or tripping or um, having uh, smacked heads in your softball game or in your hockey game? can bring back the concussion symptoms and can potentially make them worse. And a traumatic brain injury, if demonstrated, can actually get you as a qualifier. So if you're having symptoms, don't necessarily assume that it's all part of your whiplash. You may actually have a traumatic brain injury, even a mild one, and you want to check with a neurologist, especially one who does sports injuries. A good one is to find out who is treating the high school or college football players in your area or who's treating the hockey players because invariably they're going to have a lot of knowledge about concussions and whether you had one and whether you're having some permanency or whether you're having some long, some medium term or long term damage that may also be an injury that you may be able to recover and is going to affect your life going forward. So don't just throw everything and say, oh, whiplash, That's, it's nothing. It may very well be signs of something else 
and it may be a red flag of a more severe injury. So in conclusion on is whiplash really a good or bad term, I don't think it covers it properly. And I think what you have to do is you have to work with your lawyer, work with your doctor, and figure out exactly what your symptoms are and where they're coming from. If you want to learn more about personal injury law, I've got a free PDF that'll help you understand and navigate this area. All you have to do is use this link that's on the screen to join my mailing list and I'll make sure that you get a free download. Also, if you have been injured in a motor vehicle crash, please contact my office. You can use the email address below or you can contact me via my website at www.jeffmarionlaw.com and I'll sit down with you for free and go over your case with you. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, please click on the like button and make sure that you share it in your social media network or share it with your friends or family who might be able to use this information. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you click on the bell to get notifications when my new videos come out. And until that next video comes out, I'll see you.